Hey ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you happy beyond belief. If you're not happy beyond belief, then it is my intention that in today's episode I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. Yes, we're going to talk about happiness. It's like, you know, the thing that we want the most shouldn't be so hard to find. <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard to catch, right? It's a thing that every single person wants on this planet. Now, happiness might look different to different people. Happiness for my youngest son, Cameron, would be going to a video game arcade with 10 of his best friends. Happiness to me and Amy is going to be going to a quiet beach at a resort where we can just be ourselves and be adults and not have to be parents for the weekend, or better yet, two or three or four months. My real happiness is adventure, taking new routes and and exploring old abandoned buildings and going to new places and doing new things, anything outside really, other than golf or raking. (laughs) What about you? Here's here's a quote I just heard. I'm listening to a new new speaker, a new podcaster. I absolutely 100% love her. I can't wait to really dive deep into her, her teachings and her lessons, but her name is Mel Robbins. And uh, for the record, if you now stop this podcast and you run out to go listen to any of her her podcasts or she's got YouTube videos, her podcast was on YouTube, she does swear. She's like F word all over the place. So just be forewarned. But I like her a lot. She's she kind of I kind of feel like I uh, am like her a little bit. You know, I swear a little bit. I swear a lot on my own. I try not to swear as much on the podcast. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm trying to be authentic. And sometimes you need to freaking swear. Right. (laughs) So anyway, but. She said something to me. Now, somebody else said the quote, but she, she said something in her podcast, and it was about happy people do things that make them happy. And it's such a profound statement. Think about that for a second. Happy people, happy people, there's your category of your people, do things that make them happy. I'm like, stop it. Think about that. If I run into somebody who I'm like, God, you know, become friends with someone. You're really a happy person. They're like, yeah, how do you become a happy person? And I guarantee you what she's going to say or what he's going to say is I do things that make me happy. Energy is right. Energy in energy out. The things that I do throughout my day should as best as I can make me happy. Because then my business is happy, my family is happy, my interactions, my my work with clients, my time at the grocery store. So some of that is perspective. And some of that is belief. Can going to the grocery store really make you happy? I tell you, there have been times the grocery store is not on my top uh, probably hundred places to go. I really dislike the grocery store a lot. But mostly I dislike the organization of a grocery store. Because that's something over here that I need and I have to walk all the way back to the back of the store because it's back there that I need it. Or the carts are always up front and I realize I don't think I'm going in for one thing. I don't need a cart. And now I have nine things in my hand and there's never any carts at the back of the store, which is really dumb, by the way. Have part of the carts in the front and part of the carts in the back. Because what can happen is I'm going to put all those things back on the shelf because I can't carry them any longer. That's beside the point. This is not the podcast for talking about grocery stores. But I dislike the grocery store. Now, have I had really good times in the grocery store? Yes. I've run into people I haven't seen in years. There's a really good deal on something that I want to buy. Or there's pumpkin cinnamon donuts that I just love that just came hot out of the oven. So something fun has happened. But also, Amy and I have had some really great times in a grocery store, believe it or not. It's all about you. So some of it is about you and the energy that you're putting out in the world. What am I putting out? What kind of day am I about to have? What is my intention? What energy am I putting out in front of me? Or it's also about also enjoying the things that do bring you joy naturally. So today, um, now this is pre-recorded, so it was Tuesday. Our middle son, Brandon, who has autism, he's 17 years old, and he goes to a public school, but he's in a special Um, a special ed classroom, like a self-contained classroom with about 14, I don't know, 12, 14 other students. Amy called me this morning at 9.30 this morning and said that he was suspended for pushing his teacher. 
And it's the beginning of school. It was, you know, it's, we're in October now, so it's how many, six weeks of school or something. And this has been going on for a while now. He's having a hard time really regulating his emotions and he's becoming kind of aggressive. Not, I wouldn't say he's aggressive, right? But I would say that sometimes when he gets really angry, he will grit his teeth and make fists. Well, now we've moved up a level where now he's gritting his teeth and making fists, but now he's pushing, he's shoving, he's grabbing. And obviously we can't have that. So we've been working really hard about his sensory motor and working about his, his gross motor skills. And I'm not gonna go into all the science about the body. And when we get irritated, the thing that we need to do is move. And, but there's some things that they're doing in the classroom and the environment that is just not working out. And anyway, so she calls me at 930 and she's like, you know, I'm, she's at work, right? So the school calls her and um, she's like, basically, can you meet me in town instead of me, me, Amy, me um, having to drive all the way home? Can you meet me halfway? Meet me in town? I said, sure. And so she's like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm so, so sorry that this is, you know, screwing up your day. And I said, no, it's not screwing up my day. I said, I have to adjust. Because, you know, I was going to record. I'm going to work on the course. Uh, you know, I've got a group coaching program that's starting. There's things, obviously, a thousand things I have to do, but it's okay. I'll work on it later. We'll work on it throughout the day. We'll get him in, get him settled. You know, obviously, this is a thing you do. So I, still probably, so I get there. I meet, whatever, and he's, you know, he's all, like, off the rails. He's, he's arguing. He's mad. He's pissed off that he had to leave school. He doesn't quite understand what happened. Um... And he basically is like, I don't know. I was mad. I pushed my teacher. I don't understand why I'm in the car with mom right now. I don't understand why I have to go home. So it was a lot of arguing in the middle of this parking lot. So anyway, so again, she gets ready to leave. And she's, she's like, I'm so, so sorry. If I could come home, I would. So that you could record. I'm like, listen, honey, it's okay. It's okay. That's a shift. That was a mental shift, a perspective shift. I will take this opportunity to work with Brandon and I'll record tonight or I'll record later or I'll do the things that I have to do later, right? It's okay. It's okay. So my retreat that I just went on, the little two week hiatus that I went on, I didn't go anywhere necessarily, but I spent those 14 days after our expo in Kalamazoo, I spent 14 days enjoying my own company. I went on retreat I came home and initially the first couple of days, I was really, really tired. It was really bizarre. I was really tired. But I'm like, you know what? It's nice. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful fall. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to take the dogs to the park. I'm going to go for a bike ride. I'm going to go outside and rake. I'm going to mow the lawn. I'm going to wash my car. I'm going to, going to, going to, going to, I'm going to read. I'm going to watch a movie. I'm going to look through one of my Harry Potter books. I'm going to, right? And I enjoyed my time. And since then, the overall theme that is running in my life is that I'm calmer, I'm more patient, I'm kinder, I feel amazing, I should say, or more amazing in my body. Sometimes I get a little anxious, sometimes I get a little bit irritated, like that energy, it's like this irritated energy in my body. Well, since that retreat, things have been just fine. Kids are acting like ding-dongs. And they're like, you know, Cameron's like, dude, why aren't you like mad? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I'm just not. He's like, wow. Because <laughs> he noticed, right? So because before, if my day's getting interrupted and now I have to, now I have to restructure or the thing that I was going to do that I was really looking forward to has now been, you know, kinked and now I can't do that. And, you know, today, uh, it was a Tuesday and it's, you know, it's fall. I mean, it's, I don't know, it's October 10th or something. And it's like, dude, I was going to go for a bike ride today. And Brandon can't ride a bike. And um, so that could have really derailed me. Oh, I was going to get caught up on my, my week's worth of podcast. I can't record when he's in the house, you know, and plus if he's in a bad mood. And I'm like, dang, like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Right. But it was a perspective shift. And I'm not sure I just did it. I just did it because I've been taking care of myself because I've been spending time in my energy. I've been changing my mind about how I want to show up in this world, how I want to show up with my family, how I want to show up with, with Amy, how I want to show up with my partners or not my partners. That's not plural. How I want to show up with my clients, with my business, with my dogs, in my house, with my family, with right. And for myself, 
So when she called me, it was like, no big deal. Okay, I'll just record tomorrow. And there's like, oh, wait, I forgot about the bike ride. Well, we ended up fixing that. We ended up organizing it all, the whole thing. It was great. So I came downstairs with Brandon. We did some gross motor stuff. I have a gym because remember, I was a personal trainer and a boot camp instructor. So I have a ton of like workout equipment. So I have this, this basically this, um, it's like a weight machine, but it doesn't have weights. It uses your body as as the weight, as the leverage um, for this machine. Anyway, so we did some of that. And we, you know, we did some floor stuff and we did some, you know, gross motor kind of strengthy stuff. I wanted to get him back in his body. And the light switch just went on with Brandon. He just showed up. The kid just showed up. If you're feeling kind of out of it, if you're feeling anxious, go lift some freaking weights. Go to the gym. Find one of those weight machines that has legs, that has press, that has lat pull downs, that has all these things on it, and just do a round of those. Spend 30 minutes and do a round of those. And I bet you a million dollars you're going to feel like a champion. And it's going to feel amazing. That's my little, that's my little health plug there. But I want you to keep in mind where you can start plugging in the things that make you happy. I had a, I had a client join our sister circle. Um, this was a few months ago now. And I think I talked about her already, but she, they sold their house. She had over a hundred plants and sold her house and moved in her and her husband and her dog moved into an RV and she didn't put any plants in the RV because she didn't want the RV to feel like a permanent place. And she's like, you know, to me, this is her, to me, it's like plants create permanence. And I don't want this RV to feel like a permanent home. But she's like, but I miss my plants. And I'm like, dude, go get some plants. I said, can't you take the plants with you? Go go get some plants. And she did. And she's happy. Because she allowed herself to go get the thing that made her happy. I love fun. I love doing things that are fun. I love going outside. I love playing basketball. I love playing frisbee, frisbee golf. I love playing with the dogs. And I love driving RC trucks. My brother got a big RC truck, like a big one that goes like 40 some miles an hour. And I'm like, I want one. And Amy's like, then get one. (laughs) And I'm like, well, God, you know, like, you know, I'm 49 or 40, however old I am, 48, 48 year old woman. And I'm going to go get a, you know, RC truck. She's like, go get one. You have, you have Harry Potter toys. You have Cabbage Patch Kids. You have Care Bears. I love toys. They make me happy. My happiness is important. I'm not saying... Spend a bunch of money on things, you know, money that you don't have on things because it makes you happy and you shouldn't find that. You shouldn't find happiness in things, but it does. It does it. You know, driving my truck, I laugh out loud when I'm driving my truck and it does crazy cool things. I've had to climb the tree and flip over and land on its wheels and keep going. It's fun. And doing fun things makes me happy. What makes you happy? It could be the doing or the having. What makes you happy though? Like fun, doing fun things makes me happy. Moving around, playing tag, jumping around on a, on a playground, chasing the kids, skipping rocks at the beach. Um, pretty much any outdoor activity. Climbing trees. I'm a 50-year-old woman and I can still climb a tree. Playing basketball, like a boss. Right? Skateboarding. I ride my skateboard. Ride my bike. Right? I have four turtles that I take care of that are my turtles and I build their pond. And then in the winter, they come indoors into the, I call them their apartments, into the aquariums. And I get to set up their aquariums. That's fun for me. So fun and adventure is, are the things like that, the baseline, the foundation of happiness. What is the foundation for you? Exercise, movement, outdoors, plants, dogs, caring, cleaning. I love cleaning. I love organizing. That's fun for me, (laughs) believe it or not. Make your list, make your list, make your happy list. Get out your journal next to where you wrote from yesterday's podcast, who am I? New page, what makes me happy? And if you put something on there, like for me, I'd put fun and adventure. What does that mean? Because adventure to somebody else might be like going to a theme park and riding roller coasters. That ain't fun for me. I ain't riding roller roller coasters. Cannot stand them. I'm terrified of them. People think that I, I should like them. Oh, you buy bungee jump. I would skydive, but I would never bungee jump. And I, and I went on one roller coaster and I was scared out of my mind. No, thank you. I don't mind going fast. Like I, I can go 45 miles an hour on my triathlon bike. 
that bike is a boss, man. And I love driving fast. I loved riding my dirt bike fast. I love, I love going fast, but I do not like roller coasters. Here's the thing I don't like about roller coasters is I don't like the drop. I don't like, we were like, click, 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 click up to the top. And I knew we were going to drop. Well, here's the thing is as it was curving over, I couldn't see the track. And I thought I was just like falling to my death. I was literally scared to death. I was afraid we'd fallen off the track. And it was the, the one and only roller coaster I went on is in Florida. It was at, um, what's it called? Oh, Bush Gardens. And it's um, Gwazi. It's the fastest wooden roller coaster. So it doesn't go upside down. And that was my thing. I'm like, I don't like being upside down. I don't like to be dizzy. Um, well, this one wasn't, but it happened to be the, the word I missed in there was fastest wooden roller coaster. So it's Gwazi. So if you've been on it, you understand, you know what the click, click, click means. So, <laughs> so what's fun for you? What makes you happy, not content, not just satisfied, happy? What makes you happy? Now, I've asked a couple clients this. We had a group, um, this was a couple of years ago, and it was a workshop that I was doing right here locally. And I remember asking this audience, there's probably 20 of us there, what makes you happy? And I couldn't tell you how many people s stood there for seconds and were like, uh, looking around, mm, I don't know sort of my job. No, nobody's job makes them happy. <laughs> what makes you happy? Like joyous. And then, you know what my next, what my next comment is going to be? Do more of that. If you like to play basketball, go play basketball. Go shoot some hoops. Go outside, shoot hoops. Go join a, a, a club. Go join a gym that has a basketball hoop. You want to learn how to play uh, squash? Go play squash. You want to um, uh, hold a baby? Like babies make you happy, but maybe you're 53 years old and you don't have any babies. You don't have any grandkids. Go somewhere and hold babies. Go to the hospital. Go to the hospital in the prenatal, what you call it, and go hold babies. Or become a babysitter. And just a couple of, a couple of weekends here and there, you know, a newborn babysitter. I don't know. Figure out how you can add it to your schedule. That's it. How simple is how simple is that? And if you don't think it's simple, please reach out to me and let me help you come up with. Let me help you overcome the thought of how you cannot create that in your life. Because remember, it's perspective. You could have you could have a happy time at the grocery store. It only happened a couple of times, and I did. I loved it. Now, most of the time, it was like late at night. Thank God for for twenty four hour grocery stores. But you know, it was late at night. But it really has to do with a lot of people, and it's the chaos of this person's coming at me with their cart, not to zigzag. But there's guys standing there, and nobody's saying excuse me, and there's coming and going, and everyone's in a hurry, and everyone's crabby, and nobody's saying hi, and nobody's. That's that's the part of the grocery store I don't like. But the things that make me happy, you know, I, I feel like a changed woman after my two week retreat. And like, again, I said in my, in uh, Wednesday's podcast, I didn't go anywhere. I didn't go on vacation or anything, but it was just very freeing. And it was just very, it was like this relief. I, the pressure was off of me to be uh, just doing all this technology and push and go and hurry and all this pressure to get things done and accomplish this and write this thing off the task. It's like, it's off the list, this task off the list. And it was like, I get it up in the morning and I'm like hurrying up through breakfast and I'm getting my green shake and I'm letting the dogs out and I'm just like getting downstairs and go, 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 you know, and then I take a break at lunch and then maybe I'll go outside if it's nice and then maybe go walk the dogs and I come back and I'm like, go, go, go. How long can you hold that? How long can you stay in that? It's awful. Take time, become present, find the things that make you happy, put them into your day. And if you can't structure your day, because Jen, wait, you don't understand. I have four kids and I'm a single mom and I have this full-time job. You know what I'm going to tell you? Do it. Figure it out. Figure it out. I love working out. Brandon's coming home. I'm going to work out with Brandon. Here, Brandon, you're going to walk on the treadmill and then I'm going to put myself through the paces. Right? Get your kids involved. Our kids used to do, here's the thing, if you have kids and they're with you on the weekend and they're just like driving and climbing a wall, here's, here's my thought. You get a smart TV or, or screencast YouTube and go to YouTube and type in Zen Den Cosmic Kids. Zen Den Cosmic Kids. Have them do this yoga. Just turn it on. 
turn it on and make some room in the living room and let them go to town. It is, she is so amazing with getting kids centered and engaged. She tells all these different stories. Some of them are like the popular, like she does Moana, she does Pokemon, she does Harry Potter, the Philosopher's Stone. She does uh, Frozen and she tells these stories. As she's telling the story, she's putting the kids into different yoga poses throughout the story. It's amazing. I have several pictures of the boys. During snow days, it becomes a little red schoolhouse around here. We'd come downstairs, so get up, we have breakfast, then brush your teeth, then we come downstairs, we do our workout, all three of us. Then from there, it's like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever they can handle. Then we go upstairs, we do some book work, we do tabletop. So they've got book, you know, they've got math books and language arts and different vocabulary books and whatever, and we sit at the table and we do this book work. Then from there, if everything goes well, that's sometimes an hour, then they get tablet time. So they go in their rooms, they can read. They usually, they, of course, they play with their tablets. Then they come back out, we do lunch. And then from there, we went over and did this uh, Cosmic Kids. Now, sometimes we didn't go downstairs. Sometimes we did that instead. It was amazing. When it's time for me to meditate. Okay, gentlemen, you have to go find something quiet to do. I'm going to meditate. You're welcome to join me. But otherwise, you need to do something quiet. Now is quiet time. We've been doing that since the kids were little. I mean, we're talking three years old and Brandon was six with autism. <laughs> so the household could be really chaotic or it can be really structured. I chose structure because I like structure and so do the kids. When the kids are not with us and they're over at the other house, it can be very chaotic. And when they come home, they are chaotic. So that structure aligns their molecules. <laughs> it aligns my molecules. And it creates this foundation of expectancy. It creates this foundation of trust. If I do this, then this is what happens. When Jen says it's time for quiet time, I can take this time for quiet because as soon as then she's done and it's 30 minutes, as soon as she's done, we all get back together again. Sometimes we go to the park. Sometimes we go and walk the dogs. Sometimes we go to the beach. Sometimes we go to the sand dunes. But I have to be able to regulate my emotions. And it becomes fun. Now the boys have control. Do they ever come out of control? Yes, of course. Don't we all? We all get knocked out of our, of our bodies sometimes, right? Or we get really heavy in our bodies where we're just like, Oh my God, please, somebody rob me of my, you know, my body right now because I'm so uncomfortable in it. I get it. I get it. hundred percent get it. Okay. But do the things, figure it out, structure it. And listen, if you need help, if you need some ideas, if you need some, what do you call it? I am here for you, sister. I am here. I've got your back. I am walking right by you. I'm walking side by side with my voice into your ears. I am standing right next to you. I am linking arms with you as you go on the spiritual journey. I'm right here. I'm right here. And listen, you have access to me. So you go to Lady Rising, you send me an email, you send me a message on Facebook, and I will respond. You say, hey, you tell me your situation. Hey, you know what, Jen? I've got 27 kids, 15 dogs, a donkey, and nine horses. Where in the hell am I going to put fun in there? And I'm going to help you structure it. I promise. I promise you that. I promise you. I am put on this planet to help find you simple solutions so you can find happiness, health, and healing and deeper connections because that's what we want. And that's, I, I got you. I got you. I say that all the time. I'm like texting with some, with some potential clients and I'm texting with them and I'm just like, listen, I got you. I got you. You got you to gotta step into the ring. You got to open the door. You got to crawl through the window. Grab my hand and I got you. That's as simple as I can put it. That's the absolute 100% truth. The work that I do, the, the, the effort that I put in, the alignment that I have with my clients is what gets them the thing that they want. I Already three times this week, it's Tuesday that I'm recording this, three times this week, and it'll be more by the time you're listening to it, where past clients have come up to me and been like, you are amazing. Thank you so much for listening, for supporting, for your ideas, for your health, for your healing. I got you. You need help. You reach out. But you have to do the part. You have to do the reaching out part 
And sometimes that can be hard. And I understand that sometimes that can take a lot of courage. And I'm hoping that you will step in the ring with me. I hope that you'll go to Facebook. I hope that you'll, you'll find me on Lady Rising. I hope you'll join our sister call and be on the other side of Zoom and go, listen, Jen, I listened to your podcast. This is why I'm here. I need your help. Practice it. I need your help. I need help. I need to heal. I need a deeper connection. I need to figure this out. I'm not happy. I'm scared. I'm anxious. I'm depressed. I'm angry. And then let me guide you. Let me walk hand in hand with you as we go on this journey together. As I'm learning, but I'm teaching along the way. And I hope you can hear me. I hope you can, you can understand what I'm saying to you right now. And I hope that when things get hard and when you're ready, that you reach out. Because I'll say it again, I got you. If you liked this episode and you look forward to future episodes and are really looking for a community to help support you with implementing the tools that we're talking about in this podcast, please consider joining our online sister community called Lady Rising on Facebook, where we focus on that spiritual support and connection, just like in today's episode. I hope you'll join us. Go to Facebook, type in Lady Rising, and tell me you came in through the podcast. If you liked this episode and you look forward to future episodes and are really looking for a community to help support you with implementing the tools that we're talking about in this podcast, please consider joining our online sister community called Lady Rising on Facebook where we focus on that spiritual support and connection, just like in today's episode. I hope you'll join us. Go to Facebook, type in Lady Rising, and tell me you came in through the podcast.